We think we're all right because we're going to church, but my life is a wreck. My life is a mess. This goes wrong, and that goes wrong, and this goes wrong, and that goes wrong. Over and over and over and over again. <clears throat> Maybe because we've been cast out and we're being trodden underfoot. There is a price to pay for disobedience. That's right. There is a price to pay for trying to flee from the call of God. And just maybe the stuff this church has been going through for quite some time now is because we're not heeding the call. Is because we have lost our savor is because we've grown lukewarm and we're not doing the job and we want to tell ourselves we're okay because we go to church. We're not reaching the lost in here. This is not the highways. This is not the byways. This is not go ye into all the world. And I know I've said this before. But I think a lot of, of us and a lot of preachers, a lot of what I've been told over the years, they want to change that scripture. Go ye into all the churches and sit in the pews. Suits them better. But that's not what it says. Yes, we are required to gather. We are told to forsake not the assembling of ourselves together. But you know why we do this? To prepare for that. That's what this is for. This is where we come and get strength. This is where we come and learn. This is where we come and grow. This is where we come and God feeds us and gives us what we need in order to do that. You know what we want to come here for? To get happy. That's what everybody's seeking after. We just want to get happy. When our priority is getting happy over winning a soul, we got a problem. Mm -hmm. When our priority is feeling good, when somebody else is imprisoned, when somebody else is held captive, when somebody else is on their way to hell, we got a problem. Mm -hmm. Our priorities are wrong. Mm -hmm. Jonah tried to get away. God said, go preach. Jonah said, nah. And he said, I'm going somewhere else. And I can get out of this. But he couldn't escape the presence of God. And he had to pay a price for trying to escape the presence of God. And I, you guys all know the story. As I said, he ended up getting in the fish. And then you go into chapter 2. And Jonah realized what he had done. And he began to cry out to God. And you can read his prayer there whenever you want to. But there's a couple things I really want you to see here. I really want you to understand. He had to get in a really bad place. Mm -hmm. Be careful. You may end up in a really bad place. How many times have you heard, and this is only for sinners, I know. Sometimes God will lay you flat on your back to say that you'll look up. That's right. It's not only for sinners. God will get your attention. Whatever it takes to get your attention. He put Jonah in the belly of the fish. He put Jonah in there in a horrible, horrible place. And that's what it took to make Jonah realize. And then Jonah began to cry out to God. And here's what I want you to get at chapter 2, verse 9. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. Here's the thing. I will pay that that I have vowed. Have you paid what you have vowed? Do you know, you know what vow you made? Do you even realize what vow you made? When you were born again, when Jesus saved your soul, you know what you were saying? I'm yours. I am now your servant. That's a, a vow you made. That's what it is. To become born again, to become a child of God, you become the servant of Christ. And I, I can almost guarantee that everybody here who, who was born again at that moment, you said within yourself, I'll do whatever God wants me to do. 
But we're not doing it now, are we? Now I want to tell you this, because God just told me to tell you this. There's a difference because, between going out there and preaching salvation and going out there and telling them you're going to hell for being a queer, you're going to hell for this, and you're going to hell for that. That's not the message. That's right. The message is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. The message is all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The message is you must be born again. That's the message. Jonah had to get in a really bad place. And when Jonah got into that really bad place, then he said, in my words, okay, I'll do what I said I would do. Are you at a place in your life now where you're ready to do what you said you would do and be a servant of God? Or does he have to go to put you in a bad place? Is he going to have to uh, put you in the belly of the whale? Is he going to have to put you in a place where there's nowhere to look but up? It could happen. It very well could happen. That Jonah had to get to that spot. And then Jonah got to that spot. And <clears throat> then he finally realized that he needed to do uh, what he said he would do. And so God gave him another chance. Chapter 3, and the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went according to the word of the Lord. When Jonah finally got to that spot, uh, God gave him another chance. But I don't know how many chances he would have given Jonah, and neither do you. What if Jonah, after he got out of the way, would have said, I still ain't going to do it. What would have happened then? I don't know. How many chances have we had? How many more are we going to get? We better stop and think about it. And again, we need to realize the seriousness of this. And so many Christians, I think, don't realize the seriousness of this. God took it serious. Christ took it serious. It was serious enough for him to be tortured and to suffer and to go through everything he went through and to hang on that cross and to die. He was that serious about it. How serious are you? We don't know how many more chances Jonah would have got. We don't know how many more chances we're going to get. How many more times is God going to come and say, I'm going to tell you again. Here's your opportunity to act on it. How many more times is he going to come and do that? I don't know and neither do you. Maybe no more. How long is he going to put up with us not heeding the call uh, before he puts us in the belly of the whale? I don't know and neither do you. But he sent this message for a reason. And again, I want you to understand He may or he may not. But right at this moment, God is not calling you to go to Zimbabwe. He's calling you to witness where you are. The people you run into, the people you come in contact with, the people you're around. And give them the truth. And it's a painful truth. And it's offensive to people. And people don't like it. And people don't want to hear it. But you got to give it to them anyway. When Jonah realized. And he said, okay, I'll do what I said I would do. Then look what happened. God gave him another chance. He said, okay, I'm coming to you again. And I'm telling you, go to Nineveh and preach it, the preaching that I did thee. So Jonah rose and went according to the word of the Lord. Verse 5 of that, chapter 3. So the people of Nineveh believed God. If we do what we said we would do, if we heed the call, and we go out and we tell them what God tells them, tells us to tell them, then some will believe God. 
Listen, uh, they, the city of Nineveh, uh, they repented in sackcloth and ashes. Uh, they fasted uh, because they believed the message. Uh, we may tell ourselves, nobody's going to believe me. Nobody wants to hear it. We can tell ourselves whatever uh, we want to tell ourselves, but that doesn't lessen our responsibility. We still have the call to go, and we still need to go. And I truly believe that there will be a few who will believe. There will be a few that will will accept it. The problem is what I started out with, a lot of them have never even heard the whole truth and nothing but the truth. That's the problem. And then I believe that there are those out there who will accept the truth and who will repent just like Nineveh did. They believe the word of God. And there are those who will believe the word of God. And even if they don't, You have done what you have been called to do. And remember this scripture. If I tell you to warn them, and you don't warn them, and they die in their sin, their blood will I require at your hands. What exactly does that mean? I don't know, and I don't want to find out. I don't want anybody else's blood required in my hands. Do you? We got blood on our hands right now. I believe we do. Because we have let down. Because we have lost our savor. Because we have grown lukewarm. But if we realize that, and we do as Jonah did, and say, okay, I'll do what I said I would do. I'll go and tell them what you tell me to tell them. If we do that, then we can reach people for Christ. If we do that, we can keep the blood off of our hands. If we do that, we become pleasing to our Lord. If we do that, we become of value. We're not a savorless salt that's fit for nothing. We become salt with savor that is fit for use by the master. So Jonah went and did that, and they believed the word of God. And verse 10 of chapter 3, And God saw their works that they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. And I want you to know something, God doesn't have to repent. That word there is not like we think of repent. It means turn from. That's what it means. God turned from doing what he was going to do. Listen, if we can reach people, right now their destination is hell if they're lost. Uh, that's what they're headed for. But that can be turned from that. Uh, God will give them life eternal. God will give them salvation. Uh, God will give them righteousness. God will give them all that. But that's not going to happen unless we go back to where we started out. How can they hear? How can they believe? Unless somebody tells them. <clears throat> Couple points I, I want to hit again, just real quick, that, that I want to try to drive home. Yeah, there are churches everywhere, and, and it's on TV, and it's on the radio, and it's on this, and it's on that. But if you ever paid attention to any of that, most of what you're hearing is not the whole truth. Most of what you're hearing is not the salvation message. It's not uh, that you are a sinner. It's not that you must be born again. It's not that you must repent. It's not that Christ died for your sin. That's not the message that's being put out there. So they don't know. And how can they know unless somebody tells them? And how can somebody go and tell them unless they're sent? Listen, we are sent. I gave you some scriptures and there's plenty more in the Bible to tell you that we are sent. We are the salt. We are the light. We need to understand what that really means. It's no good to light it up in here. It does them absolutely no good. And if this is the part, like I told you, I can't get this off my heart. If you are lukewarm, I will spew you out. If you have lost your savor, you're not good for nothing but to be cast out. Well, God wouldn't do that. The Bible says it. That's the word of God. 
It's in red letters. Jesus himself spoke that. That you're good for nothing but to be cast out. That if you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out. We need to get a hold of this and understand we have failed, we have let down, we have grown lukewarm, uh, we have lost our savor, and if something don't happen, uh, we could be in for it. Listen, uh, and I truly believe uh, that a lot of what's happening in this church is because of those things. That's why we're going through what we're going through. Why did Jonah go through what he went through? Uh, because he didn't heed the call. Uh, because he tried to get away from the call uh, and do something else uh, so that he wouldn't have to answer the call. Uh, we've done the same kind of thing. We think if we just keep gathering here, uh, maybe if we can shout, maybe if we can cry, maybe if we can get goosebumps, that will do it and that will be good enough. That's not going to do it. And because Jonah tried to get away, he ended up in that fish. Are we in it now? Is that why we're in the condition we are as a church right now? Listen, every time I turn around, somebody got their feelings hurt. Somebody's been offended. Somebody didn't like this or somebody didn't like that. Or you didn't do this or you didn't do that. So you must not like me as much. That's constant. You may not know that, but that's what's going on in this place. Are we in the big fish? I think we are. And I don't think there's a way out until we realize, as Jonah realized, there's only one way out. That's by saying, okay. God, I'll do what I said I would do. I'll do what you called me to do. I think that's the only way out. You can sit and talk about doing it, but if we never move, God knows. Well, God, I had good intentions. That doesn't save us all. That doesn't reach the lost. That doesn't set the captive free. That doesn't get the message out there. We need to take this seriously. I don't know what more I can say. I hope, I hope you understand just how serious this is for so long. We've just taken everything, well, it was said about material things and our food and our homes and our clothes that we take it for granted. Well, we've taken God for granted. It's time we do what we said we would do to really be servants of Christ. And he told his servants to go out and compel them to come in. And that's what we need to be doing. I, I, I believe as a church, we are in the <coughs> I believe that. I believe as individuals, there are some who are in their own personal big fish. We need to pray that they'll get the message from God that there's a way to change this. I, I don't know what else I can say. It, when God really burns something on you and burns you with it, it's hard to stop without knowing that you understand just how serious it is. I know, we all think, because I've been born again, because I've been faithful, and you know, I, I do some good things and all that, that I'm good. The more I read and study, and the more the Spirit speaks to me, the more I'm not too sure mm -hmm. that we're doing enough the more I'm not too sure that we aren't lukewarm, that we haven't lost our Savior. Not 
everyone that says, Lord, Lord, shall enter in. The Lord. I went to church. I was the pastor. I was the Sunday school teacher. I was the deacon. There were people 